It was written by Tim Sullivan, who covers that area for Louisville. He joins us on 365 Sports. Tim, thank you very much for your time. So uh, where is Louisville when it comes to their athletic department budget compared to revenue? Are they in the red, or are they are they kind of right there on treading water on the top? Well, if you look at their financial statement uh, from uh, fiscal year 2023, I think they had $142 million in revenue and $140 million in expenses. Um, you know, they're, uh, uh, they've had a number of uh, severance payments uh, over the last few years that have uh, really tied their hands and, and, uh, and cut into their endowment funds. So uh, it's, it's a pretty closely run department at this point. And uh, I think that, you know, anticipating the uh, the changes that are coming with uh, the settlement of the House versus NCAA suit and then uh, Alston uh, payments that are going to have to be made. They, they've recognized that uh, they're going to have to do some belt tightening. And, uh, you know, I, I think we've already started to see it. Uh, the sports information director left for LSU and he's not going to be replaced. So uh, I think this is a, a new reality that, uh, probably a lot of schools are facing at this point. So no SID really. That's interesting. Yeah, I think they're going to, you know, they have a lot of people in that department. Right. They're just going to redistribute the, the workload. I mean, he was primarily the basketball guy. Mm. Um, and I don't know how they're going to fill that. They, you know, they have a, you know, a number of people with various responsibilities, but it, you know, it may be a luxury now to, have a you know a dedicated guy for for baseball and uh, other non revenue sports. So uh, we'll see how that works out. Tim, I don't know how much uh, the, the example that I always go to, and I found other people always go to this: uh, the real excess of college sports of like we can't pay the players, but here's this new colored waterfall at Alabama that's crimson that the players walk by. Like that's when it was just like, all right, you guys have no legs to stand on as far as the money goes, and now we've seen how that's getting redistributed uh, to your point. Did did Louisville really deal in excess that much? And, and, and uh, like you said, this is just more of like, hey, this is the reality, and, and we don't have in our position currently the the extra money. So facilities, uh, maybe one more person in the SID office. Now, hey, everybody, we got to rewire our brains. This is all going to paying players now at this point. Yeah, well, I, I think that, you know, for most schools, uh, this is going to be uh, – you know, the new reality. You know, Alabama, you know, Prince Money, Ohio State, Texas, places like that. They're they're going to continue to uh, go over the top, uh, you know, to attract uh, athletes. But you know that the reality is that uh, with the uh, ban lifted on paying athletes, uh, you know, the, your ability to to to, uh, to spend directly on them is, is going to be a lot more important than, you know, waterfalls in the, in the training room or uh, miniature golf courses like they have at Clemson and, you know, some of the kind of absurd luxuries that, that we've seen in a lot of places. And I, you know, I, I think there's been a tremendous amount of waste in the name of uh, trying to impress recruits. Uh, but, you know, that's, that's been the arms race that we've been looking at. And, you know, if you don't, do these things, you're going to fall behind. And I think that's, that's reality, but, um, you know, I think it's, it's good for college athletics in general that, that, uh, a, a little more bottom line business, uh, attitudes, uh, take hold because, uh, the, the mammoth salaries paid to coaches, the, uh, the money that's gone into you know, ever, grander facilities uh, to me this doesn't uh, seem consistent with with what the college experience is. did you just knock him off yeah uh, hold on just a second that's, that's a really good answer I, I enjoyed listening to what he was saying with that hold on just a second Tim Sullivan will join us again from Louisville sports writer sports reporter who had the story about the AD about changing athletic departments need to make uh, preparations for the upcoming NIL payments to athletes. 
what you need, not what you want, which I think for a while in college athletics, you could do the need and the want. Tim, I'm sorry we got cut off in just a second. You were kind of still going into what they were doing. Well, you know, I, I just think that what we're seeing is is a reckoning that's, that's long overdue, that uh, uh, you know, colleges have spent, you know, to a large extent, like the proverbial drunken sailor. Uh, you know, uh, with Mogi Huma, the uh, executive director of the, the National Players, uh, College Players Association, says that you know, college sports doesn't have a revenue problem. It, it has a spending problem, and I think that, that there's a lot of truth to that. Um, you know, some places can afford uh, you know, all of this excess, but by and large, uh, it's going to be very difficult uh, for, for most places to, to budget another $20 million for uh, player salary. So, Tim, um, you know, when thinking about the money and moving forward, uh, the ACC obviously has a lot of questions. I don't expect that you know what the end game is. None of us really do. The courts will decide that ultimately. But much like they're preparing themselves for paying players, I'd imagine they're also preparing multiple you know, side ramps for whatever the future looks like as far as their affiliation goes. What is the, the gist that you get as far as the feeling of, of, of Louisville and the ACC and the future and just kind of what all's going on right there uh, there with Tallahassee and, and Clemson and also uh, North Carolina to a smaller extent? Well, I, you know, I spoke to Josh Hurd, the, uh, the Louisville athletic director, about that specific thing. And, you know, I've, I've read a lot of uh, – reports that, that indicate that the ACC is going to implode at any moment, uh, that, you know, Florida State and Clemson are just you know, the tip of the iceberg, that uh, North Carolina and Virginia uh, may may well be looking to get out as well. And as long as you have this enormous disparity between what the Big Ten and the SEC generate and what the ACC and the, and the Big 12 uh, generate, you know, I think this is going to be a constant source of discussion. And as the grant of rights that the ACC has negotiated with its members gets closer to expiration, or uh, you get enough schools together that essentially the league will collapse, uh, you know, I, I think there's a, a real possibility of additional change. I've, re- I've read that there's kind of an open invitation from the Big 12 to Louisville, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, I've asked about that, and, and uh, Josh Hurd told me that you know, he's, the only conversations he's had have been with the ACC, and you know, I think he's a truthful guy, but you know, if you look at the landscape, it's changing pretty rapidly, and uh, you know, I think uh, you would be remiss in, uh, in the role of an athletic director if you did not develop a contingency plan if you know if the league falls apart where do you land and, and that's been a recurring story here in, in Louisville for for decades and if you go back to all the conferences that they've been uh, uh, a member of I, it's, I don't know if I could even give you a complete list it's, it's probably at least five or six different leagues but you know when when they landed in the ACC I thought well this is this is a, a home that you can expect to be in for, for decades and you know here we are looking at uh, you know, what what could be uh, the collapse of, uh, of, of a long-standing and, and, and very prominent league and you know, one that's been very successful uh, in many sports uh, probably has won more championships in the last few years than, than any other league but you still have the, the revenue difference with the, the Big Ten and the SEC. And, uh, you know, until you can solve that or recognize that you're not going to solve that ever, um, I think, you know, all of these schools are, are still in play. Tim, uh, wasn't there a time back, I think uh, maybe even six or eight years ago, I lose track with all the realignments since the Nebraska, Colorado, or whoever uh, left, wasn't there a time when Louisville was in talks with the Big 12, but either the Big 12 was either uh, playing mind games or it did not work out? 
that's my understanding. I, you know, I, I don't know that that's ever been addressed on the record in any detail, but, um, you know, I, I think, you know, when Louisville was, was uh, casting about for a safe harbor, uh, you know, until Maryland, uh, you know, left the ACC for the Big Ten, um, I, I think uh, any number of possibilities would have been more attractive than you know, the uh, the leagues that they were in. Um, you know, the ACC and and the Big Twelve at that time were you know, were pretty comparable. And of course, you know, Big Twelve loses Texas and Oklahoma. It's not the same deal, but um, you know, it's it's very similar. I think if the ACC were to lose Clemson and Florida State, so. Uh, I think everybody has to have a one eye on uh, on the future and think, you know, if, if the dice fall a certain way, where where do I go? And uh, you know, I, I I don't think I could make a prediction at this point, but uh, um, I think that the you know, the ACC right now is uh, held together mainly by this grant of rights uh, that uh, I think runs through uh, 2036. And uh, as we get closer to that that date, all bets are off. Yeah, and, and whatever happens in the courtroom, although that seems to be a change of every other day. Last thing, Tim, and we appreciate your time on Louisville. That's a really good athletic department. I know that there's been disappointments or whatever, but uh, with Jeff Brom, I know basketball has been a disaster at times, but they feel like maybe they're going to get that right. Um, it's a really good athletic department, a hell of a university, but are they basically sitting on the outside looking in or on the sidelines as they watch what Florida State, Clemson, North Carolina, and what they do, and they just have to react accordingly when whatever happens? I, I think that's largely true. Yeah, I, I think uh, Louisville would like for the ACC to survive and, uh, and flourish. And, you know, again, if you look at, the College World Series, half of the teams are from the ACC. Uh, so, you know, I, I think competitively, this is a, a very strong league, but financially it's not. And uh, that's, uh, you know, that, that's kind of the bottom line uh, mm-hmm. you know, for, for everybody at, at this point. It's, you know, how do you generate enough money to, to remain competitive? And, uh, you know, I, I think it's going to be very difficult for – for a lot of leagues and a lot of schools to, to stay up, uh, stay up with the, with the Big Ten and the, the SEC. I think if you look at the uh, enrollment and the alumni base for the Big Ten, it's, it, with the addition of uh, USC and UCLA, uh, they're going to have something like eight of the ten largest schools in the country. Um, and... Uh, you know, I think that that's it's hard to replicate that you know, in, in a smaller market, uh, and and that goes for you know a lot of schools in, in, the, in the ACC and, and the Big Twelve as well. And um, uh, you know, it, it seems as if uh, there are a lot of schools uh, in what used to be Power Five conferences and are now what Power Two plus you know, two others. Uh, that uh, that are, are kind of waiting for their turn in the pecking order. Tim, good stuff. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time. We'll be in touch. Tim Sullivan covering Louisville, the AD. So, you know, again, about wants, not need, uh, what you need, not what you want, uh, and, and then got into a lot of other when we come to the ACC and whatever that future is, as they kind of just sit out there. They're a good, 